Hey guys, Thomas Joseph here, and today we are tackling one of our most popular conundrums, and that is how to avoid a fallen, sunken sponge cake. Today I'm gonna to share with you an amazing recipe for sponge cake, a lot of information about the different types of sponge cakes, and hopefully you'll have success the next time you try to make one. So what is a sponge cake? Well, a sponge cake is kind of an overarching term for so many different types of cakes. If you think about a chiffon cake, an angel food cake, a genoise, those are all types of sponge cakes, and I'm gonna explain the differences between a few of them. But the classic sponge cake that's used in Europe uses egg whites and egg yolks for the leavening and also structure. And we're going to whip those two items, those two components of the egg, separately to create a delicious batter that is perfect for so many different applications. I'm gonna crack my last egg here. I'm using large eggs, and you can do that using the egg shells, or you can do it with your hands. You just wanna make sure that if you're using your hands that they're nice and clean, free of any oils or detergents, because we need the whites to whip up to nice lofty peaks. So we're gonna start, because I have one mixer here today, with the egg yolk, so six large egg yolks right into the bowl of your stand mixer with the whisk attachment, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, but you could also use other flavors here. If you wanted to make a delicious lemon sponge cake, you could add a little bit of lemon zest. Now I'm gonna also add three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, and I'm gonna whip this up on medium high speed for about three minutes until this mixture is nice and light and it's almost doubled or tripled in volume. We want something that's really pale and fluffy. And while this is mixing, I'm going to sift together the dry ingredients for this cake. So today I'm using a mixture of all-purpose flour and cornstarch, which essentially gives you a homemade version of cake flour. Cornstarch doesn't contain a lot of protein, which is gonna give you a light and airy sponge cake in the end. So they're equal parts, and I'm gonna sift them together using a coarse mesh sieve here. And that's just to free our dry ingredients of any clumps. All right, guys, this looks good. You can see how light and pale and fluffy this egg yolk mixture is. It's doing a thing that we like to call ribboning. What that means is that when you lift up the mixture and it drips down back into the batter, it holds a ribbon or it holds its shape before it melts away into the batter itself. I'm gonna put this off to the side while I whip my egg whites into the bowl of a stand mixer with a little bit of coarse salt. Salt is important when you're baking. It enhances the flavor of whatever you're making and also the salt here will help to break up the eggs a little bit during the whisking process. So I'm gonna secure my whisk onto the stand mixer and I'm going to beat this on medium high speed until we get nice soft peaks before I add in my sugar. So today I'm making a classic sponge cake which uses no fat at all in the batter. And it really relies on the egg yolks for richness and the whipped whites for a loftiness. In contrast, a genoise, you're whipping whole eggs until they get nice and ribbony like this version I have here. And then at the end of the folding process, when you've added your dry ingredients, you add a little bit of melted butter. So a genoise has kind of a, a, a richness to it that a sponge cake does not. In addition to that, we have the classic angel food cake, which we love here in the United States, and that just utilizes egg whites for volume, um, and it has a considerable amount of sugar in it, which makes it really nice and moist as well. Those are just a few examples of the types of sponge cakes that exist. The one we're making is one that you can use for so many different things. You can make a jelly roll with it. You could use it um, as the basis for lady fingers for tiramisu. It really functions in a way as a base that will absorb flavors. It's usually used as a component to some sort of confection. Now our egg whites here have whipped up. They're looking like they're at nice soft peaks. And now I'm gonna gradually start adding my sugar. So this is a French meringue we're making here. And the reason why we split up our sugars and we're adding them to the whites here is to create a more stable egg white foam, which will be helpful 
in the folding process. We'll have something that's a little bit more silken than plain whipped egg whites, which can be dry and crumbly and difficult to incorporate. And this will really help us fold a nice even batter together that has a silky texture and that's gonna rise nicely in the oven. With any French meringue, you should really add your sugar gradually so it has a chance to kind of dissolve into the egg whites. And this is six tablespoons of granulated sugar. And at this point, you really should have your oven preheated to 350 degrees. Our egg whites look great here. We have nice stiff peaks, but these are not over whipped. They're not dry. You can see they hold a nice shape to them. They're almost, I would say, at stiff peaks. They're a little soft, but that's actually how I like them because I think they incorporate well into the batter when they're a little softer. So now I'm going to combine the egg yolk mixture and the egg white mixture. I like to start with a portion of the egg white mixture into the egg yolk mixture. And this is called lightening. This is where you take something that has had a ton of volume built up into it, and instead of adding it all in at once, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be very difficult to incorporate something so loose, like the egg yolk, with the egg white, which is kind of stiff. So what this does is it helps to lighten the batter on the bottom, and then the rest of it will be really easy to incorporate. And again, the folding process is kind of scraping around the edge of the bowl, up and under, and kind of folding over. And once your base mixture, your yolk mixture is lightened with these egg whites, even if a few streaks remain, you can start adding the rest. So you wanna do this quickly, but gently. You don't want to deflate the egg whites because really all of that volume and leavening here is gonna happen because of the air bubbles that have been trapped in the egg white and egg yolk mixture. And that's what's gonna leaven our cakes nicely. We're not using any chemical leaveners like baking soda or baking powder. I almost have everything combined here. You can still see there are some streaks. And at this point, I'm now going to add my dry ingredients. So I'm gonna sift this again into the eggs and I'm gonna fold this all together until it's nicely combined. Now in front of me, I have two prepared pans and this recipe is really unique because you can use it in so many different ways. It can make one half sheet tray and one nine inch round, or it can make three nine inch rounds. So depending on what you're making, you can split this batter up in many different ways to create either a round layer cake or you can make a jelly roll, a single layer cake. It's really kind of up to you. This is just a really fantastic recipe that you can use in so many different ways. All right, so now for the pan. Now, if you wanted to, you could certainly weigh this batter out if you want it to be really precise. But for a half sheet tray like this, you wanna make sure you're using about two thirds of the batter here. And for the nine inch round, I'm only gonna use a third of the batter. So again, you can make three of these with one um, batch of batter if you wanted to. You could even make this a thicker cake if you wanted to add all of it. That would be really fantastic for a sheet cake of sorts. So I'm gonna eyeball it today. And the batter should be nice and voluminous and thick as it is here. It shouldn't be runny or clumpy. And you wanna spread this out into the corners of the pan now. And one thing you don't wanna do with this type of cake, sometimes we say to do this with cakes like yellow cakes that use the creaming method. We t tell you to tap the pan on the countertop to release any air bubbles, but the air bubbles in this case are gonna create leavening, so we don't wanna knock any of them out of our batter. And I didn't mention this before, but these pans have been buttered, lined with parchment, buttered again, and dusted with flour so that it's easy for us to get the cakes out of the pan after they bake. So these cakes go into a 350 degree oven and you wanna leave them undisturbed for about 20 to 25 minutes until the cake kind of springs back when you touch it. You don't wanna open the oven too soon, otherwise what happens is all that volume that's being created, it can easily sink back down on itself if it hasn't had a chance to bake enough where it sets up a nice structure. Try not to open up the oven until at least 20 minutes into the baking process. 
All right, guys, the sponge cakes are out of the oven. They've cooled completely. Now, when they do come out of the oven, you wanna let them cool in their pans just for a little bit and then turn them out onto a wire rack while they're still a little warm. You can also peel the parchment off at that point in time. The flat cake that I have here, this is perfect for a jelly roll. So if you are gonna make that, Utilize the video we made about making a jelly roll where you roll it up while it's still warm in a confectioner sugar dusted towel, and that helps you to get that wonderful crack-free shape. Today I thought I would top the rounds, the cake rounds that we made, and I made an extra one so I could just show you a really easy way to kind of transform this basic cake into something really beautiful. Now, if you wanted to, and uh, you really wanted to be kind of over the top, you could make a wonderful flavorful syrup, like a vanilla syrup, or you could even do a wonderful berry syrup or a lemon syrup, and you can brush your layers of cake here because this cake, as it suggests, its name is, it's a sponge, right? So it absorbs a lot of wonderful liquids and flavors. It is really a blank canvas that you can use and kind of dress up in so many different ways. If you are going to brush this with a syrup, I would suggest that you cut layers in like thinner pieces. So maybe cut this in half, brush on an exposed surface and then layer away. So this is some lightly sweetened whipped cream. I'm just gonna make a very simple cake that's kind of perfect for the summertime or actually any time that you have really great fresh seasonal fruit. Um, I'm using berries today, but you can make this with figs. You can make this even with citrus segments. It's really up to you and what you have available. Just using one of these offset spatulas, I'm kind of moving the cream, spreading it out towards the edges of the cake, but I'm gonna leave about an inch border. And a thin layer of cream is really all you need. And then I have some beautiful cut strawberries. You could, if you wanted to, you could dust these with a little bit of sugar and maybe a squeeze of lemon juice and macerate them for a little bit so that they're nice and juicy. That would be really fantastic. You can add a few raspberries. Whatever you have on hand. This cake is actually really good too. If you didn't have um, a simple syrup or you didn't want to make that, you could also heat up some jam and use that in between layers. So I'm going to top with this next layer of cake. You can push down ever so slightly so that the cream kind of pushes out towards the sides. Top this with some more cream. Add the rest of your cut berries on top. And then if you have some whole strawberries, you can put those on here. You could use a little bit of mint if you wanted for some color. So there you go, a very simple, easy way to elevate this humble sponge cake into something spectacular. Now, I wanna show you the inside, the texture. So I'm gonna take this sheet cake here and show you how light and airy this cake is. Look at how light and feathery it is. It really is a perfect, all-purpose cake. I encourage you to try it out and remember all of the tips that we kind of went through here. And if you have any baking conundrums, let us know using the hashtag Kitchen Conundrums. We love to hear from you guys. Bake away. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.